Hello everybody, I am Shepels and welcome back to Let's Play Nox. So this is going to be the final episode of Nox, and this is just basically to show you solo quests. Now already I have a character here that's at stage 5, a warrior, so let's just get into this and I'll show you how it works. So this is how it basically works. Destroy summoning obelisks to stop hordes of monsters. Find the exit to complete the map and return you to safety. Touch soul gates and you will reappear there if you die and have an ankh. Touch angst to gain extra lives. Collect items to increase your power. Collect treasure to increase your wealth. Find keys to open locked doors and chests. Find hidden areas for extra treasure and increase score. Cooperate with your friends for more firepower. Get a high score by clearing the most maps of monsters and summoning obelisks. Okay, so we're in the Temple of Ix. Right, so basically when you start off in quest mode. It's like starting with a brand new character and all you'll have is literally your weapon and the clothes on your back. You're not going to have anything like what I have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to repair my stuff first like so and yep, repair all this. I don't think I have much in the way of stuff to sell but I'll sell whatever I don't need, which includes these. I don't ever really use them, so I'll sell that. Okay. So with this mode, you can do it on your own if you want, but you can also play it with your friends. Now, the problem with this is that chances are, and it's very, very likely, Westwood Studios are pretty much no longer in operation, as you know, many of us know. So, the chances are you're not going to be able to play on Westwood Online, unless, of course, someone has some sort of server up in one form or another. But you can do it through a LAN connection, so there is always that possibility. Um, so you can do it solo or with some friends. This here is the warp that leads to stage 5. So every time you load up this game, whether you're at stage 5 or not, you will end up at stage 1 and you go through this portal to get to stage 5. But you must complete stage 1, 2, 3 and 4 first before you can actually use this portal. Right, so I'm just going to stick with stage 1 because otherwise it could take it much longer than it probably should. Now all these maps are completely and utterly fixed. They're not randomly generated or anything like that. So they are fixed, but there's a good few different maps and so you know, you're not gonna be getting the same ones over and over again very, very regularly. Now at on the first stage you're gonna sort of think, well this is easy as piss, but <laughs> trust me, it gets a lot harder. Once you get to about stage four and onwards things start to get very very difficult very very quickly and basically enemies get a, an awful lot tougher, they have a lot more health, they have you know, everything just starts to get very very hard once you get to about stage 4 and then every 5 stages you have a boss fight where you have to go up against Hecuba and basically face off against her and that pretty much sums up the idea of how this works but with that said it's not just five levels and that's it you're done it continues to go up and up and up in fives now I can't say how far it goes up in fives because I've only ever gotten to stage five and by the time you get that high, it's starting. Things are starting to get very, very difficult without buddies. But um, I'm sure that it is possible to do it on your own. And you don't have to stick by what stages you are on either. Like if you feel that you, when you've reached something like stage five, and you feel that things are getting a little bit difficult, you can replay stages one, two, three, and four if you wish. Um, but that's an entirely up to you. Um, no, oh, bollocks. Huh? And when 
as I said, when you start off, you don't have any skills, you don't have any spells if you're a conjurer or or mage. You'll have to literally either find them or buy them, and the same applies to to the warrior here. As you can see, I don't have all of the warrior's skills um, as of yet, and also you won't have to level up at all. You start at level 10, that is the max level, and there's there's no leveling involved in this. It's all about um, being cooperative with your friends or basically planning out your your equipment, what suits you better. It's basically down... When it comes to this, it's down to skill. A lot of it is down to skill. So, you don't have to worry about leveling up or anything like that. So, the first few levels or the first few stages will be more than enough to kind of get you prepared for the more challenging ones so you don't have to kind of worry about going into this and also if you remember when we were looking at the how to play section you have a thing called ank an ank these anks represent your lives every time you die you lose an ank you lose all your anks you die it's as simple as that anks can be found through through the actual each level you can find generally anks lying around and well they're kinda like a shrine I suppose you could say and you can get one life off of each ank ank shrine and you can also buy them in the shop for 50k each as well now you'll only have access to the shop at the start of the level you can't go back to the shop at any point either um, so basically before entering a stage make sure that you're fully equipped and ready to actually go in and tackle it otherwise you're going to find yourself in trouble probably but um that's pretty much how this mode works it's there's nothing complicated about it but i like the idea of it because it adds a lot more replayability and it also gives you the the option to play with your friends you can also play storyline with your friends as well through LAN or through, you know, an online server. If there are any online servers still going for this, which I highly doubt, um, unless you've got some big fan that has a private server going or something like that, I I don't know. Um, but you should be able to get up up and running through a LAN without hopefully too much difficulty. Um, but it it works pretty well. Um, if if you can get it to run with uh, multiplayer, um, I could imagine this being a hell of a lot of fun. And there, there's nothing complicated about it, but the difference between this and say the storyline is that you you can't open chests without keys. You need to have silver keys to open chests and to open locked doors and otherwise you just you can't open them. At the start of each level there is generally three or four chests lying around by the shop but again if you don't have any keys you, you can't open them so that's the only issue there but generally if you find enough secrets and collect enough keys throughout a level you'll generally have more than enough um, you'll have more than enough keys to basically unlock the chest as well but it does literally all depend on how well you do in the previous level and the object of this is just to get to is genuinely just to get to to the end of each level which is kinda easier than it sounds or should I say it's can be a little bit more difficult than it sounds. Um, on average, you're going to be looking at maybe half an hour, there about for each one. Probably not as long as you've got people with you helping you. But you are looking at probably about half an hour. I'm going to try and do this entire level in this, but I can't guarantee that I get that far because I don't want to. I don't want to make it any longer than it has to be. And this is the Ank Shrine that I was telling you about. So I've just after getting another life. So I've now got seven. 
Also, going back and playing the earlier stages is very handy if you're low on lives, so that you can actually literally stock up on lives because you are going to be needing, them, particularly if you're doing it solo. Otherwise, you're you're going to be in a lot of bother. But overall, this is this is a really good mod. I really like the idea of it. Um, I prefer it to the way that Diablo. <laughs> I'm going to say Diablo 2 because I've never played Diablo 1 online so I can't really judge it. But I'd prefer it this kind of option than what Diablo 2 offered which was where when you're playing online or you're playing multiplayer it's, it's literally exactly the same as playing a story in single player which I don't really like that idea personally but um, here it's not like that. You've just you've got separate levels that are handcrafted by the developer, of course. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. And they're all very, very different from each other. They have different enemies, things like that. Like you've got um, you've got this one, which is the Temple of X. You've got the underworld. You've got uh, the castle. You've got the swamp. Um, other ones are there, there, there's a lot of different levels. Uh, there's Land of the Dead, so you're you're never going to be you know replaying the same levels over and over again on a very very regular basis. There is enough there to keep it kind of from being too repetitive, which is a, which would be a problem in its own. But it's it's something that I really really like because. It's different from the storyline, and it works differently, and you know it, it's fresh um, for you to play. So I, I prefer this option as opposed to kind of the idea of the way that Diablo took its approach to online, which pretty much every other game has taken since. So I, just to add to Nox's unique sort of style. You've also got this very different online multiplayer mode as well, which is really something that I like because, as I said, Nox has not has really been a very very different game. It's got the action RPG style to it, but it's not what I'd call a true in nature action RPG in any shape or form. Um, like Nox is, is more about the storyline than the actual, you know, character development and you, you know things things like that. Character development and you know having buttloads of items and, and things like that. Nox isn't about all that. Nox is about the story, which is something that is generally always weak in action RPGs, um, with the exception of Titan Quest, which the story was really really good, but. You, you, you've got that there, but you've also got this unique sort of gameplay style, including its, you know, its multiplayer mode as well, which is very, very unique. And that's why I like Nox so much, and that's what makes Nox so very different from traditional action RPGs, because there, there's nothing. They've broken all the rules here. They're, they're, you know. Nox has just broken the rules when, when it comes to action RPG, and it, it really doesn't follow them at all, and it's just, it's a very unique and very enjoyable, enjoyable game, sorry I was pressing the button there, um, and it's this uniqueness that just, it gives an edge over a lot of action RPGs. Would I prefer to Diablo or something like that? Mm, I don't know. It's hard for me to say whether I would enjoy this more than Diablo. But in a sense, you can't compare the two of them either. Because Diablo is a very different type of game. Diablo is an absolute true to farm action RPG, whilst this isn't. This is a very unique game with the action RPG style to it. 
So you can't compare this to Diablo and that was the fault when it was released, people just simply thought it was a Diablo clone because of it being in in the form of an action RPG and it turned out that it's actually very, very different in many shapes and forms. And I think like just the multiplayer here or even though I'm playing it solo just the multiplayer aspect of the game, that alone is different and that alone it can't be really compared to the other because again, between storyline, the way the game's designed and just just the overall gameplay of Nox is actually very, very different to something like Diablo, to something like Titan Quest, to something like The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. Um, to say it, it, it's it's a very different style of game in in many shapes and forms. Though it has that action RPG about it and and gameplay style, it is not necessarily your true to form action RPG, which is something that I have really, really liked. And I think that this game has... I think that it's done something that many other developers were afraid to do. Um, either that or they just didn't have the bloody imagination to do it. And I've, I've discussed all this in the rest of the Let's Play, so I'm not going to go too, too deep into this. But... It, it really has this uniqueness about it that just there's just nothing that you can not like about this game in in so many shapes and forms. I mean, sure, it's had it's little bit of issues with the likes of you know combat and and, and things like that, like the ranged combat being the main criminal in that one, but despite that, there's little dislike in, well, maybe the boss fights as well, as the end game boss fight has been a bit weak when it comes to the, when it comes to the, um, wizard and the conjurer, I, I believe that they were a little bit weak, but there's nothing to really turn around and say, I just don't like this game. There's nothing there to suggest why anyone would say that because it's very unique and it's not something that you can compare to other action RPGs because despite it being in the sense of action RPG, it's still not an action RPG as such. And you, there's just no way to compare this to something like Diablo or Sacred or Titan Quest or anything along those lines because it's just it's, it's literally impossible because they're completely two different games. Um, I don't really know what I'd call this because it, it is a unique style but I, I just I don't know I don't know what I'd call it I don't know I, I'm trying to think of a sort of genre that I'd be able to stick this into but I just, I just can't but um I think that this mod is really well designed. I, I think it's quite good. It gives a sort of unique approach to to the game in, in many senses because it, it works differently to what it would be in any other game and I think that there's a lot of replay value to be had with this game and uh, to be honest it's it's something that I wish that more action RPGs would do. Um, I don't think enough of them would do it. Now there is a gold... As, as you notice, I got a gold key, but I can't find the gold door. That is the problem. The gold door is essentially a door that has really good items in it. It's kind of a not even a secret door, but I, I don't think I'm going to be able to find the gold door here. No, I'm not. But at least, it, since I haven't used the gold key f in this level, it will move over to the next level, so I'll be able to use it in the next level if I find the gold door. But it's always in a secret. <coughs> so that's basically stage one done. There was 23 secret areas on the map, I only found nine, seven of them this time. 
Obelisks destroyed 84 secrets, found 7 monsters, killed uh, 118. My score for this level was 1096. And then you go on to the next stage and you start off at the shop again. And basically, there you go, you kind of just start over again. But that's essentially what way this works. Um, there's nothing complicated about it. I mean, it, it's not a whole lot different from the storyline sort of campaigns, but you know, it, it's different and it's a lot of fun. It, it's fun even on your own, but if you got a few buddies around that had the game set up a LAN, it'd be a hell of a lot more fun than than just playing on your own. But there's there's a lot to like about it, and as I said, it's it is unique because it's not going in the traditional action RPG style, which is kind of what Nox is. It's there's nothing kind of traditional about it. It's its own unique game, and um, I think that it's it, it's definitely worthy of of trying out. And I, I wish that more games would take the same kind of approach as what Knox has. And it, it is um it is a real shame that Knox hasn't you know, it, it wasn't successful when it was released. It, it is a really big shame, but unfortunately when you have contenders like you know, when you have a contender like Diablo you know you're you're going to be at an immediate disadvantage. So I I think that's pretty much what happened. It just it was released at the wrong time, and because of that, it 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 never it never got the chance that it deserved in any shape or form. And between its unique gameplay um, style. You know, between the storylines and quest mode here, between them, both, uh, this game is, is very, very unique, and I, I would really, really uh, advise you to try it out if you like this style of game. Um, there, there is nothing at all traditional about this game. It is, it is literally a genre of its own, really whilst being action RPG but it, it breaks all the rules and it works and it's an absolutely awesome game and I definitely recommend trying it out I basically only made this one just to show you guys how Solo Quest worked that was about it I didn't really do it to you know make a let's play of it because making a let's play of, of Solo mode or, or Quest mode I should say um, it wouldn't be that interesting to actually watch. So, I'm going to pretty much leave it here, guys. Um, so that is pretty much it from Knox. As I said, it can be got on GOG.com for $5.99, which is only about 470 in Euro. It could be a little bit of a few cent in the difference because of, you know, currency exchange changes every day. But it, it's about 470 Euro, and... As I said, it can be found on GOG.com, and it, it, it's really something that you should try out. Um, as I said, if you do all three campaigns, you're going to get over 20 hours gameplay out of that alone, not including what you get out of this. So, for the sake of a fiver, it, it's, it's really, really worth it. So, I'm going to leave it here for this one. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this Let's Play, and basically the entire series of of Nox and as always I will see you in the next one thank you and have fun